I think another um, significant thing is the fact that over the past year, since George Osborne did his speech um, last year where he called, talked about um, cutting inheritance tax by raising the threshold, the Conservative Party have actually started to talk more about how you know, families are feeling the burden of higher taxes, how you know, families are struggling through high utility bills, uh, higher food bills, you know, mortgage costs going up and high taxes as well. So I think they're getting a lot of language right. And also I think a lot of the attacks on Gordon Brown as being you know, the Chancellor that's um, massively increased tax, the Chancellor's spent lots of money, that's wasted lots of money. These are hugely effective attacks. But there's one danger here, and that's the danger of actually raising expectations too high. If you keep on talking about this rhetoric without actually matching it with policy, there's a huge danger that when the Conservatives are elected, you'll actually find that people, these expectations are dashed. There's actually a precedent for this, and I feel um, I was apologised for saying this in front of a Selston Group audience. But if you cash your mind back to the um, 1970s, you know, Ted Heath won his 1970 election as the Selston man. He was the, the free marketeer, the guy who wanted to cut taxes, the guy who wanted to you know, reform the trade unions, all this sort of stuff. Now, none of that actually happened. I think that was uh, that hugely disillusioned a lot of people with the Conservative Party. So I think David Cameron has to be careful not to raise expectations so high that the Conservatives are committed to cutting taxes. That needs to be matched with policy. Now that raises a question, you know, what happened in 1979, the last time the Conservative government were elected? Now, there is a myth going round that in 1979, the Conservative Party went into the election without any tax plans. Now if you actually look at the um, election manifesto from 1979, there's a clear quote in there which says, we shall cut income tax at all levels to reward hard work, responsibility, and success. You know, quite clear, we shall cut income tax levels. Just crystal clear in the manifesto. And if you look back to what Margaret Thatcher was saying throughout the election, again and again, she talked about tax cuts for hard-working families. You know, very similar language to what we hear now. And you know, after they got elected in 1979, Geoffrey Howe's first budget, of course, re reduced the top rate of rate of income tax from 83 pence to 60 per pence, and reduced the basic rate from 33 pence to 30 pence, so we have clear tax cuts straight away. Now, what should we draw from this? I think we should draw from this the fact that in 1979 they did have a clear tax cutting policy, that yes, even though the economy was actually in a difficult situation then, just as it is now, yeah, they had a clear policy. Now, I'm not saying the Conservative Party should go into the next election, you know, with its first budget already written. I think that's completely unreasonable because, you know, as George Osborne always says, you know, he's got to look at the books, and I think that's, you know, credit to him, he's got to do that. But I think they've got to match the language they're using at the moment with a few more policies and you start fleshing it out about what they'll actually do as government. So I'll just, come, I'll just um, put together a few proposals about what they could talk about. I want to talk about some simple, non-controversial policies you know, parties that, policies that don't be knocking off 100 billion from government spending, just simple policies that I think would be hugely effective and would just flesh out the sort of fiscal policy they're developing. I think the first thing they need to do is actually rule out further tax increases. Um, I think they could very easily say, you know, family, we now recognise that families are now overtaxed. And what we will promise is that if we're elected into government, we won't raise your taxes. And I think that would immediately differentiate them from the Labour Party, who have increased tax year after year. We did a report earlier this week on the um, annual lifetime tax. We found that for the average family, um, across a lifetime, they now pay £668,000. Well, what we found was over the past year, for the lowest decile, for the poorest people in our society, their lifetime tax actually increased by 13%. So these people are hugely overtaxed. I think for the Conservative Party to say, we won't raise your taxes, would actually be hugely powerful and uh, draw a sort of clear blue line between them and the Labour Party. One area which I think George Osborne's been very effective on is the um, Google Your Money idea. This is the idea that all uh, you know, government contracts and um, all orders from the government and invoices from the government for over £25,000 should actually put, be put on the internet so the public can actually see what's going on with their spending. 
Now, this idea actually first started in the United States. Actually, it was um, Barack Obama who sponsored the bill in the Senate along the side with uh, Senator Coburn to actually bring this Google government into the US. So Obama did one good thing. Um, and it's been hugely effective over there. What they found is that journalists, campaigners, members of the public, have logged onto this database and actually identified areas of waste, areas that could be cut. And that's had a significant impact on actually finding areas where spending could be cut in the US. So I think Google Your Money is good. Um, perhaps you could go further. In the US, it's $25,000, the minimum limit. In the UK, Osmond's story about £25,000. That's a good start. Over time, that should be brought down, of course, to much lower levels. And I think we've got to match this spending transparency with a lot more tax transparency. What we've, what we've found in all our polling is that the more people are, that are reminded of the amount of tax they spend, um, the more het up they get about it. And I think that greater measures to actually show the amount of tax you're spending when you fill up your car at the petrol pump or when you go shopping, they would actually help raise the awareness of tax. And I think that would be hugely beneficial of the low tax cause. I think the Conservative Party also needs some um, clear areas of spending cuts, clear areas that are completely non-controversial, but areas where they say, look, we would make a difference to the Labour Party, we would cut spending in these areas. And I think you know, Douglas Carswell and Dan Hammond, who I know have spoken here, they've uh, gone into this in their book about areas of spending that could be cut, part of the quango state, as they call it. Now, one significant area there is the regional development agencies. I think they now cost... Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's two point three billion pounds a year. That's a clear area where the you know, spending could be cut. Good. And I personally would put that money straight back into businesses. I'd say, look, let's have a cut, cut in business tax, mm -hmm. particularly for small businesses. That'd be clear directional um, change. Another thing they should look at is actually freezing <coughs> uh, civil service recruitment. This is actually mm -hmm. a policy that uh, Margaret Thatcher took in 1979 and one that I think Oliver Lepner is committed to in the, uh, the last election. But what we found, we did the calculations on this recently, we found that a quarter of the civil service, that's uh, 131,000 civil servants, are actually going to retire within the next 10 years. Now if the government chose not to rehire, not to refill these places, they actually save £2.6 billion pounds by year 10. And of course you have incremental increases in the run-up to that. So, Again, that's a significant area of government saving. And I don't think anybody could challenge that. I don't think, I don't think people would say, oh, you're going to scare the public sector vote. You know, these people are actually retiring. What we're saying is they shouldn't be rehired. I think the final um, thing I'd like to see is a waste commission. When Ronald Reagan was elected president, he actually set up something called the Grace Commission, which actually looked into all areas of federal spending, actually tried to work out where the wasteful spending was, and how they could actually achieve value for money. And they actually found significant costs, significant savings. And they actually found that by 1990, if you remember, the Grace Commission was set up in 1980, by 1990, $10.5 trillion had been saved thanks to this commission. And I would love to see um, you know, Chancellor Osborne actually follow Boris Johnson actually appointing somebody to look into waste. Boris Johnson appointed uh, Patients Week to look into this. They should appoint somebody who should be a treasury minister, but to be responsible for actually rooting out waste. Somebody like John Redwood, perhaps. Um, that would be a good area, I think it would produce significant savings straight away. And it would mean that when George Osborne goes in and says, I'm going to look through the books, actually he would be looking through the books. And he'd be doing a root and root branch reform and a root and branch search to eliminate waste. Now, I've taken up a lot of your time already. Um, so, thank you for your patience. Uh, but those are my thoughts. Thank you very much.